Hi, my name is Chris Sikora, and I'm going to go through with you AutoCAD 2021 3D solids. Now, there's several ways to make solids inside AutoCAD 2021, and we're going to step through a number of them. And here you can actually see this is our goal, is to build this model here. And some of the features, you can see there's a, it's like a stair step. The first one's going to be half inch high. The second step is going to be a half inch as well above it. There's going to be a hole, three quarter inch diameter. It's going to be three by five wide. And then the step on the top is going to be one and a half by three inches. And then we're going to shell it after we put in um, the chamfer. You see the chamfer, actually chamfer will come after the fillet. The fillet is the round that you see here, as well as this round here. And then the chamfers are align those edges as well. And chamfers are an angle, so like it could be 0.125 by 45 degrees and puts an angle in. So, okay, so let's begin. Now, all my settings inside AutoCAD are straight out of the box. I didn't change anything, uh, or at least intentionally. And so if, if you just installed AutoCAD, you're going to have what I have. So let's go to New. Now when you go to New in the templates, find the AutoCAD 3D. Double click. And now to rotate, first of all, in 3D, hold your Shift button down on your keyboard and also the wheel on your mouse. Push that down like it's a button. Don't scroll it. Scrolling zooms in and out. But holding it down like it's a button will enable you to rotate. Uh, my favorite view is actually just like the home button right up here. Okay, that takes you to a nice view orientation. If I say go home, that's where you click on that home. Now this allows you to rotate and do different things. Like you could grab this box and rotate. You could click on different faces for left side, top, and, uh, and here's rotate 90 degrees clockwise, and then there's counterclockwise. Let's go back home though. All right, let's go to the home tab. Now in the home tab, you see there's extrudes and solids and things, but what we're looking for primarily right now is the corner rectangle tool. So click on that. And we want it to snap to this point. Now I had my snaps turned off. The snaps, snap mode is right here, or F9 as you snap on. So you want them on. And you want it to drop right on that XYZ. That's the world coordinates system. Let's go ahead and click there. Now drag it to the upper right here. Now we want, see the dimensions there on my left? I got it just by chance at three inches. That's actually what we want for that one. So you could just type three, but don't hit enter. Hit the tab key. Now see that, my, that one was four. We actually want that to be five. So by hitting the tab key, we went there. You can see it's all highlighted in blue. You don't have to click in it or try anything like that. So as long as it's highlighted in blue, we just type in 5. You don't have to type in 5.00 in this case, unless it had some sort of digits after that. But once you have that, now you can hit Enter, and we have our 3x5 rectangle drum. Now what we're going to do is, notice there's press, pull, there's extrude. We're going to go with extrude. All right, now extrude is more of the traditional method that you would see in other CAD systems. Uh, we're going to go with that first. Click on this rectangle and hit enter. And it's you see it, it allows us to pull this up. I want you to drag it up. Make sure it's above the grid. I have my grid on. There's a grid toggle if you don't like it on. But anyhow, we're going to keep the grid on. And you can see it's at 1.15 or something like that. Let's go ahead and type in point. Five, and hit enter on your keyboard and there it is. Okay, so we just made our first little block there. Now, I actually under visualize and if you go over here, let's see, there's um, click on where it says realistic. I do like uh, conceptual shades of gray is nice. Um, actually, shades of gray is really nice now that I see it because it gives you a nice strong highlight on the edges. And we're going to end up selecting edges, so that's a good one to have on. But it's ultimately your choice, whatever you want to set that to. And that was under the Visualize tab. But let's go back to the Home button. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw 
on top of this. I could draw at the bottom and just make it one inch thick and be done. But I want to show you, those of you who use other 3D CAD systems might be needing to use AutoCAD. And how do you work with planes uh, in those other systems? Like Inventor, for example, works off of the plane system. This has the ability to do basically the same thing. Uh, you'll see here you have world coordinates, top, front, left, bottom. Uh, what we're looking for is we're going to reset the world coordinates. So let's go over here to origin and then just click on that corner right there so it snaps and you can see the the tricolor right there click and it will snap there and it just moved us up and so now we're actually that's just like moving the sketch plane we could sketch on that surface now pretty easily now there's other techniques too this software has been around like i said for so long there's techniques i'm not even aware of because it's there's so many things in there okay so now that we have that now we're going to go ahead and draw another sketch of a rectangle. So go to the rectangle tool and you'll see it will snap to that. And uh, actually, let's turn off the snaps for us a moment here. And we could use the snap for the corner. Now, if you're wondering, how is it picking up the corner snaps? Over here, you'll see there's snaps and you'll see there's endpoints, intersections, quadrants, and things like that. Um, so even though the grid snap is off, uh, we could still snap to this. So let's go and click on that. All right. Now, actually, my mine's turned back on. That's all right. You can leave it on. Now, you can see we could drag this out. We could type in our new values. So we know it's supposed to be three inches. So for this width here, let's make that three. And do you remember what key we had to do to toggle to the next digit? box the tab key the tab key on your keyboard all right and this is supposed to be or this needs to be 1.5 and hit enter so we've just made another rectangle and now we could go let's try we could go to extrude again but let's try press pull move your pointer until you see the outer edges glow of that little rectangle we just drew. Click and drag it up. Now type in 0.5 as soon as you see that it's going in the upward direction. Hit enter. All right. So that is like some CAD systems out there as well. So you can see this software has a multitude of options for you to work with. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to get our, our um, a hole drilled in here. Now we could have actually had it in the base, but, and there's a lot of options like that that I'm not going through. I'm just teaching the very basics right now. So go to center diameter. Now if you're wondering, if you hit the little arrow to the right, if there's center radius and center diameter, we're going to go with center diameter because I know it needs to be 0.75. Now could we type in for radius 0.375 if you know what half 0.75 is? Of course. But uh, we're going to do it this way. So now, uh, now for this, it says specify the center point. Now, if you notice, if we go down here, um, we're getting different values. But what we should do is probably turn back on our snaps. Now, the snaps go in increments by default right out of the box at 0.5. And let's zoom up a little bit. In fact, we could go to top. And right there, minus two, minus one, it'll snap a little bit easier if we go to the top view orientation. That's where we want to be. Uh, yeah. yeah. So click, and I'll specify the diameter. And so instead of clicking, I want you to type in 0.75 and enter. And there it is. Now we can hold shift in the middle mouse button and rotate. And you can see there is our circle. Now we want to use that to cut. Now again, there's numerous ways, but I really do like the press and pull, to be quite honest. So I'm going to go with press and pull. We could have done extrude, but let's do press and pull. Get over that. Get in the center, it should snap. It'll turn blue, the outer edges. Click. Drag it down, and we'll just make it this equal. So uh, 0.5. 
and there it is. Now we have our cut. Now if you hold shift, you can see we have a hole in there. Shift in the which button on your mouse? The wheel. The wheel. Hold that down. Scrolling it zooms in and out. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add some fillets to this. So I'm going to hit escape here. And let's go to the uh, fillet tool. And that's going to be under the solids tab over here. And you'll find under, if, sham if it says fillet, just go to fillet edge. But I had chamfers I was playing with earlier. So let's go to fillet edge. Okay, now down below here, we're going to click on radius, and we do actually want it to be a one inch radius, so that's perfect if it's defaulting to one inch. Now I'm going to turn off my grid snap, and um, here, let's hit enter. And after I hit enter, now I could hover over the edge I want to put a fillet on. You'll see it highlight like this. Click. And you get this faceted preview of a fillet. All right. Now, let's try this one. Click. All right, hit enter, and hit enter a second time. And there's our fillet. OK, let's try the chamfer. Now, the chamfer is tricky. It even stumps me sometimes. So. Uh, if it doesn't work, don't get too upset. You could keep trying or <laughs> bypass it for later exercise to get more uh, experience. Okay, we're going to go to chamfer. Now we're going to go to distance first of all, and one inch distance is huge. We don't want. We only want 0.125. Now hit enter, and for the second distance, 0.125. And I know what you're thinking. Well, well where's the angle? We won't get into the angles specifically right now, but on a 90 degree edge, if you have both distances being the same for the offset, you're going to get 45 degrees by default. So essentially, we're going to get a 45 degree on here. Okay, now hover over this edge right here, and you're going to have to follow it through. I have not found a tangent edge option to follow it through like you would see maybe like an inventor. It may very well be there. Again, I don't use this all the time, even though I've used it on and off since 1986. Uh, anyhow. All right, now let's go ahead and add this edge. Now notice that doesn't like that edge. Okay, so just hit Enter. And let's add that in. Now, we could right-click and repeat chamfer. And I do believe if you hit Enter, it'll go back to repeat by default, too. I have to try that again. But let's go ahead and click here. And it remembers our 0.125 settings from the last time. So you don't have to re-input those. Select this edge and this edge. And hit Enter and Enter. All right. Now hit Escape. And we could see now we have our nice model. Now see those little blue edges. Uh, if you click on the part, and then hold shift, click on it again, they disappear. It just needs to be refreshed. There's a refresh in here too. But anyhow, uh, so now we have that. Now we're gonna shell this out. So let's rotate around. And rotate around, I'm holding, again, shift in the middle wheel. We want this view, because this is gonna capture the three faces we need to open up. So let's now go to shell, and go ahead and select your solid body, because a lot of times you can just read what it's asking down at the bottom here. Now, remove faces. Let's go ahead and select this face here. Now, what's interesting is that the face, everything's blue. The faces that you select turn to the original color of the model, so gray in this case. Uh, and if you want to hold the control key for multiple faces, do that. So I'm holding control. I selected these three faces. Now I'm going to hit Enter. Enter again. Oh, uh, I forgot to put in the right size here. 0 0.06. So 60 thousandths. Is, that's manufacturing terms. I know mathematically that doesn't, it's not how you count. But in manufacturing, we call that 0 
60 thousandths. If it were 0 0.10, we'd call it 100 thousandths. If it were one thousandth of an inch, we call it 0 0.001. That's one thousandth of an inch. So um, it's different than what you learned in math class, but that's just how the manufacturing sector is, especially in the U.S. with inches. Okay, hit enter. All right, let's go ahead and hit exit here and exit. All right. And there we have our solid model. And to save this, just go to save. And it'll just save it as a DWG file. We're going to save this as E1. So capital E1. Oh, must have cap locks on. There we go. And I'm just going to save it in my documents. All right, and that completes exercise one.